Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving swiftly on to um, the next session is um, no, I've lost it. <laughs> there we go. Um, improving customer satisfaction from Dean Phillips, the head of relationship management at the University of Aberdeen. Um, and I think he was brought into Aberdeen 2008. 2006, okay. Well, it says in here that your formal introduction to relationship management went to Aberdeen. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and again, Dean's here to give us his story. Slightly concerned it's a Scottish morning, um, and also um, striking similarities to the presentation given by Lorraine. In fact, I thought we haven't converged on this at all. And uh, so uh, a lot of it will be similar. And I'd raise a question to you when you get to the lightning strike, because I'm going to tell you pretty much exactly the same as what St Andrews did, why we came to have to change. And I wonder what it is about IT that requires these external reviews to make the change. Why are we not internally considering that and keeping ourselves fresh? And I, I, I don't know why. Maybe it's a credibility thing with our university governance structure. I don't know. But it's interesting that we um, have done this. So um, good morning again. I'm, I'm going to give you improving customer satisfaction through business relationship management. Um, I'm also going to keep an eye on my notes here because my, I, my team created this and have been changing it right up to the last minute. So it's a joint effort, although they're not here today. Um, background to myself, I've worked for the university now for over 30 years uh, in a variety of roles and, um, and you know, today I'm called the head of relationship management um, and that's about developing closely rela uh, working relationships with a variety of customers. I've been doing that for years under a variety of titles. And in fact, you know, we're in IT services now, it was computing before. All terms that have changed along the way, but it's the same process. And immediately prior to this current role, I, was, I held responsibility for IT services for the largest research intensive college, uh, the College of Life Science and Med Medicine. And I've been really fortunate to have experienced roles in research, teaching, and administration. I've held research grants, I've published. Um, and that really has helped me formalize relationship management uh, at Aberdeen. You cannot underestimate the benefits of experiencing IT services firsthand on the other side of the fence. So why change? Prior to my appointment, here we go again, an external review was, was commissioned by the university to look at how best to structure IT services in the library. I was part of that review because I was separate from the main computing service, running a separate computing service in the largest college. And to put that into perspective, that's about the size of our other institution in Aberdeen. So with that, that sort of capacity. The report highlighted some significant issues and opportunities for IT services. IT services somehow had missed that the university had restructured and um, had not mapped themselves to the college administration structure and actually were more aligned to student uh, support and, and all other sections had adopted the structure. I don't know why IT centrally had not adopted that structure. Um, it was very functional in organisational structure and was not service orientated at all. Um, it did not treat um, users as customers. In fact, the term was almost banned. You know, don't use that customer term. We're now allowed to use that. They did not take a consultative approach to defining needs and wants and, of the, and, and those dependent on our capabilities. It provided what it was thought was capable of rather than what it was actually required, so it was a complete disconnect there. Communication was poor and used purely for broadcast purposes. There was no dialogue. Um, fundamentally, IT services uh, was not aligned to the university strategic plan. Um, another significant thing that came out in the report was the word trust barrier. And, there had been this immense um, development of a trust barrier between IT services and the, and the wider university community. As a result, all the colleges wanted to do their own thing. They'd rather employ their own staff, and they'd rather deal with external agencies than actually deal with the university central services. Add to this rising costs and lack of any clear value of IT services. We had to change. There was no, there was no other option. 
So what happened? Uh, well, there was a plan similar to St Andrew's. Um, a new director was appointed. Seems to be a common theme. Um, they were appointed in 2006, and an, a huge extensive consultation period was undertaken, which was you know, challenging at the time for IT service. Significant themes emerged, though. Um, we had to, in addressing the problem of alignment to the college structure, it was agreed to, to develop a formal relationship management capacity because that was seen as one of the key things that we were not engaging with the, the customer base. Um, and that was a well-established practice both in private and public sectors. Um, this included uh, capability in account management and an intelligent customer function, incorporating business analysis and project management. We needed to adopt and utilize appropriate standards and definitions, and ITIL gave us that framework, but it takes time. Definition of services, identifying service owners has been extremely challenging. No one wishing to take on responsibility. IT staff don't seem to want to take on responsibility, and they're excellent services in some cases, so I don't quite understand what, what that is, and, and we, we still challenge that for the today. Um, it was agreed we should merge the disparate IT teams, so, that's, so my entire team of 43 staff were merged into the central services, which did cause significant challenges. Um, and we've only just won some of the areas over, and that has more been driven by the fact we've increased the quality of our services, and these people now wanting to join us, as opposed to preferring to act on their own, which is a good way to attack the, the things. We had a previous culture of where IG support was provided by non-IT departmental representatives, these enthusiastic individuals. We had to stop this, but our IT service colleagues liked this. And in fact, these people out in the departments actually preferred to do IT rather than the research and teaching jobs that they were employed to do in the first place. We did an investment strategy, and like St Andrews, we, we, we built up a, a recognition of that we'd underinvested in IT to a certain degree. And we rationalised the spend, because the university was spending an incredible amount of money on IT, but it wasn't in any way centralised or focused. Um, and we needed to invest in our staff development, especially with regards to service and ITIL. We didn't go on world-class training, but we certainly have done a lot of customer relation training. And, and we needed to address the trust barrier and, and develop a customer engagement plan, which was aligned to the customer requirements. But we, not only did we need to align the overall structure, but we needed an IT strategy that was aligned. And, and, that should, and we agreed from the outset that that should be customer driven. It wasn't going to be something that it couldn't relate to. It was very much customer driven. And in order to achieve this, we set about um, introducing relationship management capacity and their overall responsibility would be for IT strategy. Relationship management was seen as the key to delivering the step change in service provision and acting as the conduit between customer requirements. We pretty much have the standard um, ITIL structure, um, service provision, four divisions. Um, in 2011, we had another change in director, the, and the university at the time decided that um, that we already had the structure in place and we had a management team in place and they extended the portfolio of the Director of Finance to take on IT. Um, and that was in recognition of the divisional management structure that we already had. And relationship management playing the most strategic support role to the Directorate, ensuring the managers of the three main service areas could concentrate on service improvement, quality, performance and efficiency. <coughs> The fundamental role of relations managers is the coordination of, of um, relationships between key stakeholders. It's a huge responsibility area. You know, we've got account management, we've got business analysis, we've got business process management, we've got change management, we've got project and pro program management, service management, I could go on. The role is extensive, but please define it if you're considering it. Um, to avoid being a catch-all for what others do not wish to take responsibility for, because that has been a huge challenge. Do these people exist out there? Um, the job description was extensive and took considerable time to develop and review with my colleagues and ensure I had buy-in from them before we even went to recruitment. Colleagues outside IT commented on the advert saying, did I really need hostage negotiators? Actually, on reflection, I seem it really a useful uh, skill set for them to have. Experience from the sector analysis showed that 
they, we must ensure these are full-time roles. I've spoken to some of you out there who have tried it with part-time roles, have tried it um, with more junior roles. It hasn't worked. They're now going back and revisiting and, and uh, appointing at a senior level. The, in Aberdeen, my relationship managers are, are salary graded at deputy director level. So these are very significant people. So that would be your senior lecture reader level, uh, if you're putting it in academic terms. We had 96 applications in the, first, in the first 12, which clearly met all the essential criteria, six of which we interviewed, and six were appointable. And I recently advertised a, a, a vacancy, and we had seven, 70 applications. So these people do exist. During the recruitment of my team, and in fact at the a conference this year, um, somebody mentioned about not just appointing the right people, but the right people for the team, and I cannot underestimate how valuable that is. And when you're going out there to create a brand new team, appointing four people, that has been challenging, because they all come with different backgrounds. But somehow, if you get there, the, the results are huge, and, and we have achieved that. I think I'll just give you a, back, just a bit about the team because it gives you a flavour about the people I appointed into that team um, because I, I, many questioned because at the time I, I appointed quite a lot of them with no IT background at all because in, the, the right decision was business skills and experience were much more valuable. We've got lots of IT experts. We needed somebody more that was going to take forward. So Natalie is our most recent appointment coming from a marketing and communications background with over 19 years experience. Her latterly she was playing a senior role in the NHS as a head of engagement. So very much she was doing all the slides, worrying about what I was saying and being recorded saying so she comes from that kind of background. Gail joined us from Scottish Enterprise Grampian again with extensive experience. She'd been uh, the manager of the organisational um, learning team a huge knowledge base um, and an understanding about knowledge management actually has an MSc in knowledge management. Russell was the only one that was appointed from IT. He worked for AMEC, an oil service company in Aberdeen, and his latter role was he was international IS manager, and he wanted to move into a different environment, was fed up of the constant changes in the oil industry. And Mike had had a variety of roles in project management and, uh, and is now responsible for, for program management. But he also has a, a team of six FTE program, project managers and he chairs the Microsoft Office 365 Education User Group because he's got a personal interest in that. It's important to keep the interest of these individuals as well and it may not always be related to their job function. Especially within Aberdeen, I don't know if you know, but we've got a huge recruitment and buoyancy market up in there and keeping people engaged is incredibly important. So we may not be able to offer them financially what the others are offering, but we need to offer them an enriched environment where they can carry out some of the things they might want to do themselves. Um, so the RM team are based in, in, in their respective colleges uh, to keep them in touch with their customer base, but they come together in joint initiatives and uh, as the needs arise. They're, they also play um, central roles in our university leading strategic um, university capital programs. Um, and they all sit on all the project boards. So this gives them a wider portfolio and, and gives them credibility. Developing a range of communication strategies uh, that can be implemented across IT services has, has been difficult. Actually, we failed on the first attempt. And, uh, and it was because there was so much change going on. It was just trying to do too much at one time. Uh, and it was mostly related to internal buy-in within IT services that rather than the customer. We'd managed to take the customers on a journey, but we'd actually not quite got the, our own IT team on the, that journey. Um, we now keep it very simple because the amount of information that we were forcing onto the customer base that was just being put straight into the delete bin was extensive. So now we've got a very simple message. Every message that comes out is very clear. It says what is happening and what you should do. Um, and and we are customer driven in that, the piece of work for the team. And so the, the other part of the work that was undertaken was the development of a customer focused IT strategy, which was clearly linked to the university strategic plan. I'm sure you're all familiar with strategy development, but I, I, I just wanted to take a few moments of your time to share with you our approach to delivering a customer driven strategy and how that's led to improved customer understanding and satisfaction. We d did a detailed planning exercise under. under you know, reviewed the sector, looked at toolkits, 
identified others who sought to differentiate themselves through technological advantage. We consulted with the user community. We, we, we structure interviewed 58 key players across the university. We had internal consultation, which had workshops, discussion forums. But we asked them to also describe the benefits and competitive advantage of each of the goals they brought to the table and what that would provide to the university. So they weren't just allowed to stick something down the paper. It was like, what will it actually achieve? Um, we designed a framework for doing this, because even though we had all these toolkits, it, we seemed to have all this information. It was like, how on earth do we bring it all together and actually create a strategy out of it? Um, it identified all the key elements for us um, and allowed us to, to structure it appropriately and analyze it. And we also linked it to annual, our annual user satisfaction surveys. And I'll come to them in a minute. And we went on to develop that framework to not only link it from the university strategic plan right through to our IT strategy, but onto also our operational planning process. So it's now completely linked. And I sat in a measurements and metrics talk yesterday, and we've linked it right the way through. So from a, a, an operational planning a, a target, it's linked right through to the university strategic target. So everybody's very clear where the linkage takes place and where the money's being spent as well. This approach has been hugely successful, copied by our colleagues in other professional services. They've borrowed the framework and just gone and done it. So the library have done that for their own work as well. It took a while we start, it, it, and was approved in September 2012 after taking six months. But we provided a digestible format for the customer base. So there's no point creating a huge document. We needed to create a one-page and don't get me wrong, this is stolen from somewhere else. It's, made, it's not the same words, but the, for, the format of it is, is one uh, that's been used in uh, many cases. And I think it kind of gives you a summary of, of where we are at. And I think we, we got it there, but I think it, as we go into the next change cycle, we'll probably improve on, on this as well and then take that. Um, so I'm not suggesting for one minute that our customers are not intelligent but a number do find it difficult to articulate how technology can enable them to do their work smarter. I actually prefer the term remove the burden of IT, which is where I, you know, was, where was I originally came from. Um, in the role of intelligent customer, we're taking on the deflection because there's so many requests. So somebody has to deflect them away from the technical specialists uh, and w for access to services because we need to do that. Um, we also in, in sometimes need to deflate their requests because that might be a need as report. Well. But we also get behind the request and augment the request to make a stronger case for IT services. And that only is not just IT services, but for um, the support of the um, capital funding and things that we need to do to put that in place. As I mentioned before, we, we, we have to communicate with our customers a strategy to engage with operational planning and, and also identifying and defining services in a service catalogue. I think the word service catalogue is sometimes overused and I think it's, you have to be able to d define processes, services, or you've got no method of managing expectations. And some of my technical colleagues find that difficult. Um, and we needed to identify clear service ownership. This is easier said than done, but don't give up. Um, customer champions are, are fantastic. They, they, they are a very powerful voice, um, clearly recognizing IT as a business enabler, in some cases the differentiator. Um, we are being better informed with regards to customer requirements, doing the technology effectively, providing those valued partnerships, provides for a more predictable and planned range of quality services. The account management function, um, it's responsible for managing expectations as we do not have resources to give them everything. I mentioned communications before. We keep it simple. What is happening? What should you do? Um, all of the RM team are trained in business process analysis, providing positive contribution to both university and college level to a number of business process um, reviews. <coughs> The definition of services, service redesign, quality measurement, customer negotiations at times of failure, and we do fail, fall within our remit. We support the development of new technologies, the introduction of new services, defining and identifying customer needs, negotiating with internal and sometimes external providers to fulfill these needs. It's important, as I said before, to work with customer champions 
who can show clear recognition of value. Leveraging the expertise of these champions, they can assist in influencing decision making. Um, but be aware, using them, uh, my IT colleagues felt a bit uncomfortable about that because when I was on the other side of the fence, I was using my customer champions to instigate change and sometimes that can feel uncomfortable to some. We are the enabler, um, but without a clear definition of role, we can be a dumping ground um, for those customer interactions that service owners would rather not have. It, it's essential that IT services are financially transparent, as this can create greater credibility and in fact, uh, moving and taking on, uh, becoming the, our director of finance, get, being closer to the purse strings has improved uh, our relationship considerably with finance. Um, and, and also, so since um, we took over and created the financial transparency, we've increased alone our capital budgets by 1.5 million, which is significant in this time of cutbacks. Um, and we've also looked at the distributed budgets and are now centrally managed by relationship management. And the customer perception is they've got a greater influence over the spend. Even though they had the spend out there before we centralised it, they, they felt it. As I said before, these are full-time senior roles and once they become embedded, capacity is an issue because everybody wants a piece of them. Um, so it's, and with all the significant capital investments going on, we need to keep that in mind. Expanding the project management team um, and increase in demand, our biggest challenges are, with, are within IT internally, um, which is a turnaround from those that wish more investment in server engineers rather than, the, than, than RMs. Processes are now well defined and communicated. Communication takes on many forms, but within the research environment, face-to-face um, -face interactions with principal investigators cannot be underestimated. Spending under time with them, understanding their challenges, have made significant impact. And we recently invested in a central HPC together, which has been a change that would never have happened in the past. We are still evolving as a profession. I'm always keen to share experiences. So satisfaction, I said, are, are our customers happy? Well, um, it seems likely that they are happy. Um, th this, this is indicating those who are very satisfied are satisfied. Similar to Lorraine, we've, we've gone on a journey and we've, we've fulfilled that in some respects. Maintaining that satisfaction at that high level is always going to be a challenge. Um, but more enlightening, what is, it, is that year on year, we've got another question that says, have we improved in the last 12 months? And um, over 40% of both staff and students year on year have said that we have. So this is a consistent message that we're getting. We also offer our staff and students the ability to comment and well, these are analysed categories, uh, categorised and where possible followed up directly if they've allowed us the time, the opportunity to do that. We received over a thousand individual comments this year, some of them positive, some of them negative. Um, this is some of the ones that are commenting on relationship management I've, I've highlighted and by no means, do, we do receive negative comments. And it's interesting because an example of a negative comment was the communication, and it highlights how we need to try many, many different forms of communication, was one of our customers commented on the lack of a 24 by 7 help desk, and yet we've had one for six years, supported by Norman. And I do wonder if they even try calling. You know, so it's, it's, it's interesting. We can see it, and you repeat it, and see it again, but it is actually... You know, these sorts of things. But sometimes they don't offer you the opportunity to follow that up and say, well, actually we do. But one of the things that we have done is that to increase engagement with our user satisfaction services, we now make a report annually that says, you said we did. And we're linking everything back to all the comments. And so it's now becoming a clear vehicle for change. And we're actually getting real good feedback coming in now of where there are problems that we might not be unaware of and where there are service improvements. So we've now got a, a much more engagement. So what have been the highlights over the last six years? Um, we've got a customer-focused business-enabling IT strategic plan setting our strategic direction in support of the university's global ambitions. We've formalised the project office and the programme manager role to ensure delivery and transparency of resource management for significant university projects. That's not all the small ones, they're dealt with locally. These are significant ones. Um, and the project office actually not only supports 
projects within IT, they're now being asked to support projects across the university. And we recently supported um, one of our other institutions in Aberdeen through their transformation programme. So one of our project managers was seconded to work with them because they didn't have the capacity. And I think this is a great message to say we're, we, we're not competing in some respects. So it, it's about sharing resources wherever possible. Um, user satisfaction is high. Um, we formalised a governance structure uh, under the banner of NESS, as we're calling it, North East Shared Services, um, with the overall objective of delivering IT services in the context of a regional ICT coherent strategy. And that's with our partners, RGU and NEST Call in Aberdeen. And that's been incredible. We've delivered, um, like yourselves, we've had a, won a few awards, lost a few as well, but more and more won, wins and loss, um, award-winning data centre strategy for the North East of Scotland. And it, this is providing now not only primary but secondary data centre capacity. We all needed to build new data centres or do something. And we went commercially, looked at the commercial options. They were too costly. And then we came down to sharing. And we've got to a sharing environment. And, and, and you know, this is a great thing. And we've rationalised our capital IT investment across the institution. And it's a much more planned approach. And customers feel more aligned to that. We've... Um, developed a, pro a proposal with the City Council um, to create an incubator hub supporting the aims of a super-connected cities programme. This is funded, um, and both ourselves and Robert Gordon are fortunate in to, to be get both gain funding in this, and this is to create a corridor between university research programmes and the development of an incubation facility for business projects utilising IT technologies. This is, this is just about to kick off a really fantastic uh, thing to be involved in. And the last thing is, uh, on this slide is, is we've consulted and designed an agreement with the City Council to deliver a city-wide Wi-Fi eduroam service for HE and FE students and staff. And this is in the final stage of the contract negotiation. So this would mean that if you're sitting in any public building within the city of Aberdeen or even wandering the streets, because I understand they're going to use these smart bins to be Wi-Fi hotspots and things like that. So, it, it, you know, they will get the same campus experience wherever they are in the city. So, and we're, we're also looking at that so that if they're sitting in Starbucks or, cost, uh, or something like that, they can gain, so they, they can learn wherever they wish, and also to create engagement to other students from other, uh, other institutions. So lessons learned. Uh, it takes time, but how, who would have guessed how much time it takes to change this big tanker? But we are, we're getting, we've got internal and external recognition, the value of relationship management. Um, internal challenge, IT challenges have been many and varied over the years. From the, we want more network energy, engineers, to can you arrange for this printer to be removed, to can I get a project manager, because these technical people are constantly failing. You, you've got to be mindful that we are not a dumping ground, and this has been our biggest challenge. RMs need to be focused internally, but as well as externally. Uh, identifying and facilitating opportunities um, for improvements within IT services. We have the eternal struggle about keeping RMs at a strategic level. Don't get me wrong, uh, some operational fixes, uh, quick wins that are develop for developing relationships are good and they should be used. But you have to avoid the danger of us becoming this super help desk person. Uh, because that's not what we are. You certainly can't win them all. Um, but we're seeing improvements in all areas. Leading by example, providing high quality services normally wins in the end. We will get a kick in. We constantly we do that. But I feel that we've got to transform that experience by improving and coming back with a plan. So take it and take it in positive and put a positive spin on it. In an academic environment, it's difficult to talk about business benefits, and sometimes it's just about becoming trusted, and you can add ben benefit to the institutional service offering. Support your ac academic customer champions through close integration and establishing contribution IT can make. They can present IT e expectations in their own language and highlighting to others how they may have unrealistic expectations, which if we tried to explain to them, they would not. And I've, I've sat in a room of 60 principal investigators where actually I've just said one thing and then suddenly the whole audience has taken over discussing it and, and they've come out with the answer that I wished. It's a very powerful tool. Consistent quality, reliable services, all what we aim for. Uh, managing 
t at times of failure. It's also how you, do how you deal with at times of failure, communicating clearly, providing regular updates, and, a plan and showing how we are planning to avoid the repetition, putting those processes in place. Services need to be clearly defined as how do we manage our customer uh, expectations. Appoint at a full-time senior level. Credibility with an academic environment, you won't get it if you don't do it. And develop the team to support each other because they are isolated from IT and everybody in some respects because they're based out in their colleges which are quite disparate in Aberdeen. Make sure they get the university-wide IT exposure through strategic initiatives and in its sports engagement at an institutional level. I, I'm really fortunate I've got a team of can-do people and they take considerable personal ownership of everything that's asked of them. And wherever possible, we're leading by example throughout IT services. So, our side, what's the future hold? Um, well, thankfully, I think we're here to stay, despite my IT colleagues' initial scepticism. Um, and has a recognised and developing professional body, body now, currently based in the USA. And we've been working with the Business Relationship and Management Institute to develop courses and uh, materials for future RMs. Uh, may undertake, similar to the professional development opportunities offered by the BCS. Um, although we are based in IT, there is a recognition from other professional services to the value of the RM role and how that could be applicable in their area. This development is welcome, but offers opportunities, but requires to be managed under a university strategic context um, to avoid cause of confusion of roles and responsibilities. So it's a welcome thought, but we need to manage it carefully. Um, we're in the final stages of delivering a paper on the development of strategic, a strategic programme office. Um, this will see overall university-wide coordination of university strategic initiatives, not just IT, because one of the things that's been apparent through all this process is the, the, the linking of all these initiatives together and who takes them forward and who supports them from that. And RM and the project management programme role will come into that. Um, like the introduction of RM, this will take time to introduce and will challenge existing governance. So I'm under no illusion this is not going to be a short-term solution. We're going to take time. Um, as a responsive IT service, I don't believe we'll ever not be embracing change of some sort, uh, form or another. We are responsible for embracing change, working with members of IT services, the customers to, who find it uncomfortable at times. Um, and developing those excellent communication skills and, and making sure their voice is heard and considered. Um, I hope you found that presentation useful and happy to answer any questions. Thank you. You got all the questions, Laurie. <laughs> Hi, thank you very much for that, Dean. Um, I guess one of the challenges for a relationship manager is to try and engage with a variety of people um, from the key areas that they're responsible for, rather than just one or two stakeholders uh, who may not actually understand all of the processes, all the detail of what's happening, much as they might like to think they are. H how does your team cope with that? So at the, at the moment, they, they do deal with those key stakeholders as well. But one of the things that we've started to develop is new starts coming in. So we get engagement with new, new appointments. And also, um, most of the colleges have a forum structure at which they are there at the time. So that's an open invite for everybody within the colleges to come forward and at the time they get to interact with a variety of people at that time. The user survey is one of the ways that we get to the larger customer base um, and we do follow them up because some people do give their name and, and contact details for us allows us to follow up. It, it is a challenge but it's, it's about working with the the academics and, and pinpointing who those people are that you need to engage with. But some people like to ha shy away from it and don't want to engage. And one of the things I did um, from when I started off the role was I, I moved myself physically into the centre of a research building and moved my office and thought, well, if you're not going to come to me, I'll come to you, and made it quite plain that I was there and available to come and discuss. And my colleagues have, and my RM colleagues have done exactly the same. And I think that's being on their grounds rather than expecting them to come to you has also been one of the things that's improved our process. Uh, I'd like to ask you about the 
idea of um, engaging with new starts. I think that's useful. Uh, and presumably that um, happens after they've been there a little while, so they, after they've got uh, an idea of what's going on in their de department, rather than initially when they, they're not going to know. It's both, actually. It's, yeah, it's, it's, an, it's an initial appointment. It's welcome. ITU are here to help. Let's talk about what, you know, what we've got to offer you, and then we go back and revisit them and say, how's, your, how's it going? How's all this technology helping you and supporting you? So, so we do go back and review with them. One of the things I come across is uh, people who have existing processes with fairly primitive IT or perhaps no IT support whatsoever. But because their process actually works, they don't realise that it could be improved. It, it, it is one of the challenges, and we're going through a massive ERP um, implementation at the moment, which is ch challenging us on a process level, which is highlighting a number of those things that you mentioned there. Things that have been going on for years, which have 50 stages of a process, which actually can be done in five, and, and it's flushing them out. But you're right, in some areas, that person has been doing it like that for a, for a long time, and they don't actually want to change. And, and that is. That is a challenge because we might be able to provide a technological solution that could improve that process. But it's, it's normally the business leaders out there that are not within IT that are identifying those and bringing them to our attention. And we go in and support them through business process analysis. And we've got a business improvement team as well now which take forward all those things. So we're highlighting those and working on various areas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So,